Today, we are smashing some of the biggest myths around snakes. This fella's having a real crack. Oh, listen to how they growl. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Doros. It's all happening today. Got plenty of cleaning going on. I'm in the middle of milking. Um, and we're putting together a bit of an unusual episode for this one. We're gonna go back and look at some of our Q&As, um, our Mythbuster type things. Yeah, we're gonna jump into this episode. Sit back and enjoy. I've heard it said in lots of different places, um, if a snake's got more of a diamond shaped head, can you let go mate? If a snake's got more of a diamond shaped head, <laughs> this, this fella's having a real crack. If a snake's got more of a diamond shaped head, they're venomous. And if it's more of a rounded head, they're not venomous. Do not go off that, all right? Again, that's an old wives' tale. <laughs> King Browns, I'll tell you. So you would have seen it at the start there, didn't want to buy it, and now he doesn't even want to stop biting. So <laughs> I haven't had one hold on like this for a while. There we go, beauty. Yeah, so don't go off that old myth either, all right? Ooh, she's a big, big bit of gear, and... Uh, Hood is in full action. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, king cobras are. Oh, listen to her, they growl. They're the biggest venomous snake on the planet. Um, with the biggest one ever recorded at 5.7 meters. All right, so that is a huge. Even as a python, that's a big snake. Now, they're not actually responsible for that many fatalities each year. You really got to muck with these snakes to get bitten by them, like hurt them, provoke them, try and kill them. But yeah, extremely uninclined to bite. As you can see, she's just holding her ground, super confident. But the bites, they are bad, all right? And unfortunately, most people that get bitten by these snakes end up dead. You just go into cardiac arrest and, um, you know, without antivenom. These are developing tropical countries where the majority of the bites happen. People can't afford the antivenom and uh, they have... Uh, yeah, a terrible, terrible death. And the death, ooh, the deaths can be quite fast too. You know, I've heard of um, bite to death in like 20 minutes with this species. Even though she looks super aggressive and so on, she's not aggressive, she's just defensive. So, you know, they're sharing jungles with large, like, you know, Asian elephants, big bulls can be over five ton in weight. Obviously an elephant's not gonna eat this, but it doesn't wanna get stood on it. Tigers, other big ungulates and so on. So they've got to act super defensive to try and bluff their way out of um, hazardous situations, I guess you'd call them. You know, if this snake was to bite me now, would I be okay? Cause I've just taken his venom. That wouldn't even be 10% of his venom socks in the gland there. So if I took a bite and he envenomated, I'd still be in all sorts of trouble. So um, no, absolutely, they never give us everything in the, in the one bite. We found in the past that we milked them every single week, we actually got smaller yields because it takes some time to generate um, the venom that they've used in the milkings, right? So even though they're only, like she probably only gave 5% of her venom yields then, but it still takes her time to generate that about a week with the right temperatures and food. And then we give them another week and they just get all the way back to 100%. So when we put them on the vial, it ends up, we end up more venom doing it fortnightly than we do weekly. So less danger for us, as in handling and, and restraint, less she's got to do. Um, so it's a win-win, I guess. Tiny little head, tiny little fangs, tiny little venom glands, but it's the fifth most venomous snake in the world. And this thing, if it bit me, can literally kill me without first aid. Yeah, isn't it crazy they start out so small, but this snake here will literally go on to um, be used to save human lives with his venom. So um, yeah, very proud. Brown snakes, I've showed this in videos before. They are probably our most defensive snake in Australia. They rear up and do these crazy strikes and carry on. It's designed to put space between you and them so they can look for an exit. But I, I completely understand why people look at that and go, oh my God, this snake's trying to attack me. It's ju they're just trying to put the fear into you. Get away from me, I'm dangerous. So they can look for that opportunity to scoot out of there. I have literally caught thousands of snakes in the bush. I have never been chased, okay? I've had plenty of Eastern Browns rear up and carry on, you know, three to five meters even, but they're not chasing. They're just trying to create space so they can boop, out of here. You would have seen in some of my videos, like most of the brown snakes I handle here are absolutely extremely defensive. They go bananas when I get them out of the enclosure, um, but they're not aggressive. It's purely defense. They're not trying to chase me. With brown snakes, they really react to movement um, and they usually do that typical S position 
and then they fly up erratically like he just did then, normally mouth open, but yeah, any sort of movement, he'll just strike straight at it. So that is not aggression, all right? That is purely defense. All he's trying to do is create space between me and him so he can look for easy access to get away somewhere and watch this. He'll just go straight into the enclosure there. Doesn't want to turn around and fight. He's just looking for somewhere to get away from me, all right? So people really get confused um, with snake behavior, thinking that it's, a, it's aggression, but it's not aggression, it's purely defense. He's trying to drive you away so he can look for an escape route and bushka. I'm too big for him to eat. He doesn't want to waste his venom on me. Um, so yeah, he just wants to be left alone. So different venomous critters worldwide have, have evolved to have really big fangs, really small fangs, spurs and so on. To give you an idea at her fang size, that's them there. So she dropped one of these with her last milking session. So that is about six centimeters long, which is huge for a death adder, massive. These rattlesnakes make me seriously nervous. Seriously nervous. Because their fangs are, you know, the difference between like our lapids, which is our highly venomous snakes in Australia, and like a viper or pit viper, a lapids have fixed front fangs and they're tiny. Vipers are hinged, right? They're in these big sheaths, and as they roll forward, they spear out like this and just go boom, and they do not miss, all right? If you're in that strike zone, game over, and the bites are nasty. If you see one snake in an area, whether it's your backyard or you're out camping or so on, does it necessarily mean there's gonna be a stack of snakes? Not really, you know, you hear a lot of people going on about snake nests and, and whatnot. Rarely does that, oh, whoa, man, she just hit that so hard. Far out, that is an absolute stonker of a yield. Um, woo. There you go, guys, have a go at that, would ya? Yeah, so it's yeah, a question I get asked a lot is, you know, snake nests, if we see one snake, is there a stack? Sometimes if it's like a little baby snake, could be that they've just hatched out there, but highly unlikely. Most baby snakes are predated on very quickly. Um, and if you happen to be right there where they're hatching out or like a live bearing, like a death adder actually, um, you know, it's really unlikely to come across that. So more often than not, oh, when you got, like if you see one snake, don't stress out, it's probably just one snake, all right? Have a go at this, for a brown snake, it's literally jet black in color on top there. Um, and then underneath, look at the, the belly on it. Just absolutely stunning. The name brown snake, I've probably said it before. It's a shocking, shocking name. Um, purely because most of them aren't even brown in colour. Oi! Ooh. Come on, mate, up here. Oi -ya. Yeah, look at the, the dark gloss on this snake. It almost looks like a red belly from on top there. Really, really nice looking animal. Crazy, look at the color variations in, in brown snakes. Isn't that wild and banding and so on? Color, look at this guy, he's almost jet black in color. You know, brown snakes typically, typically have the orange spots on their bellies where this fella doesn't have that whatsoever. But you can see he's got the orange spots up on the upper body there, but they fade out to almost nothing lower body, which is what I was looking at. These guys with their caudal lure, they sit it above their head like this and they do this and as Lizards or birds come in, boom, they just smack them and uh, let go. Now, the interesting thing with venom is it's used in three ways, right? Defense, securing prey, and it also aids in digestion. So like the eyelash, you'll bite something and let go. The animal will run off. He'll follow a scent trail with his forked tongue because they smell their tongue. They don't smell their nose like we do. So they've got a special organ inside the, the top jaw known as a Jacobson's organ. And as they're flicking the tongue in and out of the mouth, it wipes up above the, the top jaw there, hits that organ, and it'll tell him what he's smelling. Um, so yeah, they'll track it down, they'll actually bite it again, load it up with a bit more venom, and uh, that'll actually start to break down that animal and aid in the digestion process. This is like Australia's version of a viper, right? You can see how flexible those jaws are. So snakes, a lot of people think that snakes dislocate their, their jaws to eat things. It's not the case at all. They've got multiple um, bones in their jaw structure. So the bottom jaw, for example, is made up of two separate bones. And that's what you can see folding forward there. Like that doesn't hurt her at all. That's just a separate bone running across there. It's got one here and then it got them in the, in the back desk and that allows them to open their mouth to literally 180 degrees, if not further. 
and then they've got this really stretchy skin so they can eat massive things. Like, she could tackle an adult blue tongue if he's that big, all right? Just so big, absolutely massive. But we love her. This is again an old wife's tale from back in the day with snake bite and snake bite treatment. I believe some people still try and do this today. It doesn't, you literally can't suck venom out of your arm, all right? Once it's in your lymphatic system or your blood system, that's it. There's no sucking it out. There's, you can even still buy online like suction kits for like snake bites, um, where they say you put it on and you pump away and it sucks the venom. It doesn't work, all right? So that again is an old myth. Um, all you need to do if you think you've been bitten by a snake, you do snake bite first aid. Go to a hospital. Very simple. All right. Now, the interesting thing with tiger snakes is they are a live bearing species. Okay. So they give birth to, to live young this time of year, February, March. That's when they're doing it. The biggest clutch I've personally seen was 44 babies and they come out there about that long. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to show you a baby tiger snake because I've got a couple just out the back here. So let's go and have a look. This is a two week old tiger snake. So this is a, a mainland locality. So his mama, beautiful mama, is from one of the localities we collected from recently from a few years back. And uh, she's got that really nice, rich chocolate, um, yellow banding, which is really typical for that area. But yeah, isn't it crazy? Like, look how small this snake is. Like, it's not even 20 centimeters in length. I've heard this my entire life, and it is not true. Yes, red bellies will eat brown snakes, like as in eastern brown snakes, but brown snakes will also eat red bellies. So it all depends on who's the biggest snake of the day. They're both snake eaters. Um, so yeah, that one comes down to who is biggest and strongest on the day if they come into each other. Generally, you find red bellies around dams and creeks and so on, and brown snakes aren't always hanging around those. They will come down for a drink, but yeah, so that's, that's an really old wives tale that one i've heard it heaps it you know they've got black snakes around you won't have any brown snakes because they keep them at bay and they eat them all and stuff but old wives tale okay Alrighty. hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh, a bit of a fun one and i hope you enjoyed some of the myths we busted remember drop some comments if you've got any myths you want busted or just general questions all right so you know the drill like share subscribe and i'll see you all for the next episode